Okay, so one thing I want to do is I want to go back and look at the brute force approach again because I know I said in the last entry that a brute force approach would not work and I think I actually gave some numbers here that I wrote down um, oh yeah so I figured out that there is 4.7 times 10 to the 961,523rd possible routes and computing them all would just not be a feasible solution However, you know, I think there's value in modeling that and processing. And then we can use that as sort of like a skeleton structure and optimize based on that bare bones algorithm. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so um, this is the program that I made last time. And as you'll remember, it, uh, it models, this is the map of the dots. Now, if I were to try to do a brute force to calculate out all different paths, that would take forever. I mean, uh, I don't know if you remember last entry there was, um, I, I did compute one random path and that actually took, you know, a few minutes just for one. So computing all those would take a really long time. So I'm gonna redo this so that there's, we're working with fewer dots. So I'm going to create a new program and we're going to reprogram it with much fewer nodes to work with. Okay, so you can see here, uh, this is the code that I generated and it's really simple. All it does is it generates 10 nodes of which we can find the shortest path between all of them. But this is gonna simplify our problem a lot because the other one had way too many nodes to do anything with via brute force. But with this program, I can limit the number of nodes. So now I'm gonna write the code that will find the shortest path between them. Okay, so um, I finished the first method involved in the brute force algorithm, and that one is to generate a list of lists of nodes. So essentially what that means is this method is going to have a list of the paths that it can, that the salesman can take to get to all the different nodes. And the reason why I know that this did it correctly is because currently I have it programmed with five nodes. So when I generate this, you can see that five nodes pop up. So you have five nodes. And I have it programmed to print out all the paths that it found using this method. Uh, and basically, what it found was 120. Now we can prove that this is right. And I did this using recursion. So we're gonna go to the ink and I clear this. So because there's five nodes, it starts its first recursion. Up. Go here. So it begins the recursion with no nodes um, present. And it first adds the first node. And then it goes, and it will add a second node. And then it will add the third node by default initially. Then it will add the fourth node. Then it will add the fifth node. And it will say, okay, I'm done, there's no more nodes to add. And it will add this as a route. And then it will go back to this step and say, okay. Um, actually, it won't go back to that step. What we'll do is it will go back to this step. And it'll say, all right, one, two, three. Are there any other options besides one, two, and three? Say, all right, great. One, two, 
three, five. Then after that, I say, okay, are there any notes left? Okay, one, two, three, five, four. So essentially, it starts with this base foundation and it changes the numbers at the very end in this recursive method. That's a uh, really simple description of it. I would highly suggest looking at the code if you really want to understand it. But that's basically the way it works. And my program printed out 120 different combinations. Now, using this recursive method, is that feasible, or is that a reasonable estimate of number of paths? Well, uh, based on that, there should be one, two, three, four, five. Now, the first, uh, using this for loop um, in the recursive method, initially there is five different possible nodes it needs to go through. So there's five. After it's picked one from there, there's four nodes left. Then there's three nodes left to pick from, then two, and then one. So this is 20 times three is 60 times two is 120. So turns out it found the correct number of paths. So now, now that it has this list, it has a list of paths, of paths. What it needs to do is it needs to sort through all the paths and find the shortest one. So I'm gonna write that up right now. Okay, so you can see I finished the code that sorts through the list of paths and finds the shortest one. So this is what we have. All right, great, so it works. So you can see it generates these nodes randomly and it connects them in what appears to be the shortest path just by looking at it. Um, a good way to tell is by looking at the distance between the two nodes that aren't connected and seeing is there any line that is longer that could replace it essentially. And it doesn't look like there is. Between here and here, that seems like a pretty long distance. So it appears that this brute force algorithm works really well. And you can see it's almost instantaneous, you know. It, it's able to find this path incredibly qu quickly for five nodes. So the next thing that we're going to try is we're going to try upping it to six, six nodes. So we're going to up it. Ah, oh, see, it's, it's still pretty fast. It does this pretty quickly is able to find the shortest route. Um, we're gonna up that to seven nodes. Again, really, really fast. I'm gonna up it to eight nodes. Again, really fast, it's able to just hammer through these combinations and find the right one. Let's up it to 10. I have, a fe I have a feeling there's going to be a... Oh, yep, there we go. All right. So I just pressed the space bar and I began the combing algorithm to find the shortest path. You can see nothing. Oh, there we go. All right, so it showed up. So you can see, again, this definitely looks like the shortest path between all the cities. Um, but we're, we're going to look at this and we're going to see if we can find a relationship between the time it takes to find it and the number of nodes. So I'm gonna write an algorithm for that right now. All right, so I finished the algorithm that will compute the time it takes for each interval of number of nodes. And I had it output that time in milliseconds to a CSV file. I have here. So this is what it ended up with. So for the first three paths, it took, it looks like it rounded down to zero milliseconds. Actually for the first four paths, it took zero milliseconds to find because obviously when you only, when you only have four nodes there, it's only four times three times two times one, which is 24 paths. So the largest of these four only had 24 paths to compute, which the computer could run through incredibly quickly. Now with five, it took one millisecond. And again, the five 
add 120. Right, because that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 6 took 1 millisecond as well. But when we got to 7, it took 4 milliseconds. Um, and 7, let's see. What is, uh, whoops. What is, uh, 7 factorial. So there's 5,040 different, uh, combinations for that one. So what we can do here is we can take these numbers and we can project how long it would take. Now, essentially, this mathematically won't work if we plug in zero because obviously it didn't take zero seconds, but we'll plug in a really, really small number for each of these. Okay. So we have a really small number. Now what we can do is we can graph this in Excel. So we'll select it. So we have this scatter plot here. What we're going to do is we're going to add a trend line. Um, it's going to be a exponential trend line. Let's get rid of the linear trend line. And this is what it looks like. So you can see it has sh it shoots up really fast. Shoots up really fast. And what we'll do is we'll display the equation that it's using. Now obviously there wasn't nearly enough data to get an accurate representation. And also this is excluding problems like memory leaks and um, you know memory usage problems that are associated when you start using more and more nodes. But just as a general case, it's going to be uh, 1 times 10 to the 8th times E times 2.5878 times X, or E to the 2.5878 to the X, or times X. So let's, let's try plugging that in. So let's say this equals... Uh, Power ten to the eighth times two point five eight seven eight times we we'll use this cell right here. Enter. From power, maybe. There we go. All right. So let's plug in. So five nodes. Oh, whoops. This isn't to the eighth. It's to the negative eighth. All right. Cool. So, so this looks pretty reasonable. So. Based on this chart, if we plugged in five nodes, it would take 0 0.004162 milliseconds. Which was pretty close. I mean, it took one millisecond. Let's say if we plugged in eight, it says it would take nine milliseconds. Now in real life, in the program, it took 12. So the, the equation is pretty close. Now, how many, if, if we had a hundred nodes, how long would it take? Okay. So that's how long it would take with 100 nodes with the program I have in right now. So that is a huge number, 2.43 times 10 to the 104. So if we divide, let's see if we took that, and we divided that by 1,000. And then we divide it, and that will give us seconds. Divide that by 60. That will give us minutes. Divide that by 60 again. That will give us hours. Divide that by 24. That will give us days. Oh, this needs to be divided by. And then divide that <laughs> by... 
365. And that will give us years, all right? So seven points, so, you know, about eight times 10 to the 93rd years. That is how long 100 nodes would take. And remember, we don't have 100 nodes in this problem. We have a lot more than 100 nodes. So, but I, this is definitely useful just to see how the brute force, how, the, how, how this NP complete problem can get out of hand really quickly. I think that's useful to model. Now that we've seen this model, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write an algorithm that looks for a shorter path without having to look through every single possible route. 